software quality engineer at Capital One, and I'm going to talk to you about my monstrosity of a personal website. My Twitter doesn't seem to be showing on all the pages. Uh, ah. um, so I joined Capital One about two years ago, where I was working on inner sourcing the web servicing platform that we have for our customers. And first job out of uni, didn't really know what was going on. And working in a DevOps environment, wanted to get a bit more hands-on. So I was working in the customer identity team. It's working on back-end infrastructure for logging in, logging out, registering users in a secure way. It was a commercial off-the-shelf product, so we picked up Chef to use our configuration management tool. Um, but as I say, I just started my career, and I wanted to get a bit more experience with it. I didn't want to just, just do this stuff at work. So I wanted to learn by doing, which is how I do things best. So decided to work at home. So work on the safety of my own projects so I can work outside of work hours. I don't potentially cause production incidents and get a bit more involvement and a bit more safety. But the issue was I didn't really have many of my own projects to work on. So while I was at university, we had a couple of courseworks, but there was nothing to the sheer scale that I was working at at work. So there was nothing that I was actually wanting to build, test, and deploy in a consistent, in a very managed and a provably good way. On the side, I do some web design. So I had some customer sites. And I was like, I could play around with these, but they probably wouldn't be happy if the way I was testing was with their production um, sites that are serving customers. So instead, I use my own site, which, sorry, these are a bit small. Um, so my site was originally just a portfolio um, to try and get me to um, help with the job hunt. But it's now become a bit more, it's more technical blogging, portfolio, conference talking. And so that is a massive list of technologies that I use to serve an 11 megabyte static website. <laughs> really not necessary. But the whole point of this over-engineering is it's helped me learn. So for instance, I wanted to have fully automated deployments. So I picked up Capistrano, and now I have no idea how to deploy my website manually. It's, it's all gone. Um, but it's these sorts of things that, that helped me practice the sort of things that I'd be doing at work. I had a little pet server, which I'd manually provisioned, set everything up. Now it's fully automated using Chef and Terraform. So again, no idea how to run it myself. But it means that I am practicing these things that are commonplace during my work. While we were exploring things like the definition of done and how workflow should work best, I have gone through this quite complex process of using branching strategies and Git flow, uh, which I've documented on my blog. It's worth a read if you want. Um, I also started playing around with GitLab's review apps. So it allows me to push a branch, and that will actually spin up on my website in a production-like way. So I can actually play around with, well, what should it look like? Again, in terms of workflow and quality gates, adding some extra testing. So again, it's a static site. What do you need to test? But it's things like, well, are all the images, do they have all alt tags? Do the links actually resolve to things? Um, again, playing around with pipelines. So build, test, deploy with a static site. Again, there's a lot of stuff there that doesn't need to be done, but it's helped me in a really bite-sized way practice a lot of the stuff that I would be doing every day. Also, moving into an agile team, never doing agile before, um, gave me the chance to play around with how do you do story and issue tracking? How do you prioritize it yourself? And again, this was where GitLab got in quite nicely. So what's next? I want to actually de-over-engineer it um, by over-engineering it and splitting out things like projects and talks into microservices that I can then consume at build time. Um, but <laughs> I also want to stop self-hosting it. Um, so that's a little bit too much extra work. So I want to move to something like Netlify. Um, and I've also got like 107 things that have been like niggling away that I want to either over or under engineer. Yeah, so to go back, I've spent a lot of time look looking at a lot of production-like practices for a little blog that barely anyone reads. But it's been really useful for me as a way to actually 
practice these things and see a lot better. And a great way of seeing how easy it is to do it wrong and how easy you just be like, oh, I'll just do this bit, I'll just do this bit. And then before long, you've got this absolute monstrosity and you don't know what to do next. There will be no questions. <laughs>